Luqman al Hakim, he is not a prophet, he is not a messenger, but he is a righteous, upright, pious man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran Kareem that Allah named an entire surah after his name. And they say that Luqman, he was born during the time of Dawood alayhi salam. And he also lived during the time of the reign of Sulaiman, the son of Dawood alayhi salam. And they say that Luqman al-Hakim was born in the southern part of Egypt. During the time and the kingdom of Dawood alayhi salam, he moved towards Palestine and he sought knowledge from Dawood, then from Sulaiman. And he was a wise man that people will resort to and seek knowledge from. Some of the scholars say he was a slave and his master used to look down at him. His master used to mistreat him. But then when he found out about his wisdom and he found out about his forbearance and his understanding, his master became so close to him. Then at the end, he freed him and he became a free man. And amongst the events that took place between Luqman and his master, that one day the master of Luqman, he gave him a sheep and he told him to go and slaughter this sheep. And after he slaughters the sheep, to bring the best part of him. So Luqman al-Hakim took that sheep, he slaughtered the sheep, and then he brought to his master the tongue and the heart. Then the following day, his master gave him another sheep, and he told him to take it, and to slaughter it, and to bring the worst part of it. So Luqman al-Hakim went, he slaughtered the sheep, and then he brought back to his master the tongue and the heart. So his master was amazed, and he said to him, Please explain, how do you reconcile the two? So Luqman al-Hakim responded and he said, how beautiful the tongue and the heart can be and how bad and evil the heart and the tongue can be. The heart and the tongue are the most beautiful parts in you and the heart and the tongue can be the worst parts in you. It's with this heart and this tongue that you could win people however, with this heart and this tongue that you could turn people away from you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised him in the quran kareem because of his wisdom understanding things the way they should be understood and then we commanded him to thank allah Azza wa Jal for granting him wisdom and whoever thanks allah is only thanking allah Azza wa Jal for the benefit of himself then allah Azza wa Jal, he speaks about that moment that luqman al-hakim tells and gives an advice to his young son and he says to him, Oh my son, do not ascribe partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, ascribing partners to Allah azza wa jal is extreme injustice. Oh my son, imagine if there is a weight of an Adam seed or a weight of a mustard seed and that mustard seed was in a rock on the surface of this earth or in the heavens now for a fact that Allah Azza wa Jal knows where it is. And now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see it. In other words, Allah Azza wa Jal can see you. Wherever you are, at whatever place you are in or at, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see you. Don't think you could hide away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows what we do. Allah knows what we say. Allah knows every action that we take. Allah can see us. Allah can watch us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows of everything that we do. This is the advice that Luqman gave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see everything, Allah can hear everything, and Allah knows of everything. Then the third advice is now where he says to him, Oh my son, establish the prayers. He did not say to him, pray. He said, establish prayers in your life. When you pray, you pray because you have to pray, and you pray because you feel like it's an obligation upon you. Or you pray just for the sake of lifting that responsibility of your shoulder. But when you establish the prayers, you lift the prayers even though you're outside the prayers. Because what's the main purpose of praying? That you become conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you say Allahu Akbar and you read the Fatiha and you make Ruku' and you make Sujood, during that process, the only thing that's in your mind or the only thing that you try to have in your mind is that you are standing before Allah, so you only want to think righteous. 
When you are praying, you try and connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though most of us and the vast majority of times, we're not even devoting in our praise. We're not even concentrating in our praise. The prayer is not about that three or four minutes that you put to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you make those movements. The prayer is about making a change in your life. Live your entire life as if you are praying every single moment of your life. And then he follows that, call for which is good and prevent from which is bad. Enjoin people to goodness and prevent people from badness. And have patience. Have patience over what you endure. Have patience over what you face. Have patience over what you encounter. Have patience over what you experience. In life, there are so many things in life there are so many times and so many moments and events in life that we need to have patience. Not always throughout life and over the course of time that we continue to experience goodness in our life. Sometimes we experience goodness and sometimes we experience evilness. Sometimes we experience happy things and sometimes we experience sad things. Have patience over what you experience. If something goodness comes to you, thank Allah for it. If something evil or sad comes to you, have patience. This is life. But there's something else that Allah Azza wa Jal is alluding to in this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to tell us those that are upright, those who are righteous, those who establish praise, those who are called for good, those who prevent from bad, will always experience hardships in their life. Indeed, these are from the most determined matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's given now another advice to his son, saying to his son, O oh son, don't turn your cheek, don't turn your face to people. What does that allude to? What does that imply to? This is implying to pride. When people have pride, and people with pride, when they talk to you, they don't face you face to face. They are too good for you, for you to look at their face, and for them to look at you. And that's why they look, they look at you from the side of their face doesn't want to talk to you, doesn't want to face you. Now the advice that Luqman is giving to his son, don't turn your face to people when you speak to people. Whoever has an atom white of pride will never enter the paradise. Don't think you are untouchable. You might think that you are more superior than everyone, but in the sight of Allah, you are the worst one in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you walk, walk gently. And when you speak, don't speak with a high voice. Be moderate and balanced when you speak and when you walk. Lower your voice when you speak to people. Respect people. It's disrespectful when you speak to people with a loud voice. This is the action and the attitude of a donkey. And from amongst the advice of Luqman al-Hakim that he gave his son, he says, Oh my son, don't be so sweet or people will swallow you. And don't be so sour, people will spit you out. Be balanced. Don't give too much and don't take too much. Allah praised this ummah because of its moderation. Oh my son, have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the fear that Allah would not accept from you. And also, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the hope that Allah azza wa will forgive you. Balance. And that's the beauty of Luqman al-Hakim. He was very balanced. How wise he is in his understanding and how wise he is in the way he dealt with people. Some of the scholars say, that Luqman al-Hakim passed away and he was buried in Palestine. He was buried in Beit Lahim, Bethlehem. And other scholars say he was buried in Yemen. And other scholars say he was buried in Egypt. This is Luqman al-Hakim, a man with full of wisdom, a man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised for his wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised 
for his righteousness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised for his piety. Amen. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named the full surah after him. Amen. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to take as a role model. And obviously the greatest role model for us is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I ask Allah to make us from amongst those who listen and hear, act upon what they listen and hear. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka.